Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. Oh wait, that's better. Guten Tag, drone racers. This is my ET100, which I reviewed and I liked everything except the camera, but I've gotten two questions over and over and over. One, how do you get D-Shot working? Because it kind of looks like a turtle and everybody wants it to support turtle mode. And two, did you fix the camera? So for the second part, yes I did. Look at that, it's gorgeous. I'll show you how. The first one actually took a little more work. This is not made to run D-Shot natively. If you turn on D-Shot in Betaflight, motor one doesn't work. So I started doing some research, found a couple things online, but the best information I found was from another YouTube channel called Copterheld FPV Racing, and it's a German channel. Luckily, 20 years ago, I studied German and was able to go through it without too much of a problem. So I will link that video and that channel down below. So if you wanna go watch his channel, since really he's the one that walked us through this, feel free to do so. If you would like an English review, keep watching here. So you'll see the video is done. I actually went through and got everything working and recorded before I recorded the intro because I had no idea what was gonna happen. So there are several pieces of this video and I'm putting them all together so you can see everything. One is how to get this Runcam Nano working with this quadcopter. Yeah, it sticks out a little bit, so there's a chance you could hit it. If you hit it just at the right angle, you can make contact with the camera, but overall, I don't think it's gonna be too much of a problem, and it is gorgeous. It's pretty easy to install, not too bad. The second part is getting D-Shot working, because you need D-Shot working in order to be able to support everything to get motor one to turn and to be able to support turtle mode. And it took a number of steps to get it working. So in this video, I go through every step that it took in order to get D-Shot and turtle mode both working. And then we do a flight. And I'm going to say they are both absolutely worth it. You've seen me fly around the E10S quite a bit in the winter. This was my typical drone for indoor reviews. And that's not going to happen anymore. This is my indoor flyer. It's a lot heavier. It's, a, it's quite a bit bigger. But seriously, it's small enough that it will fit through most places, and it's just great. These motors aren't overly powerful for inside. Now with the camera upgrade, it's just outstanding. I absolutely love this thing. I think everyone flying inside should have one. There we go, that's enough rambling. Now on with the process of getting it all working. This is the camera that originally came installed on the ET drones, and this is a Runcam Nano. And this is what I'm gonna replace it with. It is a little bigger, so the lens is gonna stick out the front. I don't think that's gonna to be too much of a problem. I don't expect to break it, but we'll find out, I guess. The shape is just a little bit different, but I've test fit it and found it does work. The cable was different. This is what came installed on the Nano, and this is the cable that was installed on the other camera. So what I did is I just removed the cable from this one. And when you do that, be aware these wires had been pushed through the board. They were in there really well, so I had to heat it and pull it out, not just off. The nano wires came off really easy and it was a really easy process to solder these back on. So I've got the lens cap on here. I opened up this hole just a little bit and I probably did too much. So I would try it first. Don't try and open this up. See if you can just shape it and fit this through. I'm not sure at this point. And also something to be aware of on the nano, the wires are on the right. So you're gonna wanna go into the body this direction. And for me, it fits through pretty easily since I opened it up, but see, it's still a little bit large. I do have to take the lens cap off in order to do it to get it to fit through. I wish I could fit it through to avoid scratching the lens, but you do what you can. So there, I'm just gonna have to push it through the back because it does have to fit through all the way. So there, now it's through, but it's wobbling around a little bit. On the back here though, there's two plastic pieces on the side that are about the right shape. You wedge it between that and then wedge it up and click it in place. So it clicks in place underneath these plastic and it's in pretty good. I'm gonna try it without any hot glue. I thought if I need to, I can add some hot glue, but it's in pretty good. Not super tight, but probably tight enough. I haven't flown it yet, but I have tested it, plugged it in to make sure it works and it looks really nice. We'll find out about that in a minute, but now for the next step. So I've removed the flight controller. Here's what I did. The third pin up is motor one, and you've got to disconnect that from the ESC down below because you have to change the way that it's controlled. So what I did is I took these needle nose pliers and grabbed a hold of this pin. I had my soldering iron right there, and I had some solder on the end, got it nice and hot, and I held this board. It's cool now, so I can do it safely. Over that edge with my head down there, and I just applied pressure to this pin until it just slid out. So I got that disconnected because you can't have this pin connected and have D-Shot. OK, 
Okay, now I have the top of motor one connector here. I, you could also solder on the bottom, but I would have to take this off and the wires are all tight. So I'm gonna try and solder to this and we'll just see if it works. I've added some, I've kind of tinned it basically. Uh, I've added some solder to the top of there. I have a blue wire here, which I've gotten off of a balance connector. I'm gonna solder one side here. The other side goes on the flight controller up here on the PPM port. So I've also added a little more solder there. So the wire is gonna go from there up and around and to the PPM port. I'll let you uh, take a look at it after I solder it because this is so close, I, I can't do it with the camera in the way. And there, it's all back together. I've gotten that soldered on the PPM and it's a pretty easy solder job. There's not too much around it. Just make sure you don't go under where this screw needs to go. And then the wire goes, feeds through for me in the front here and then through into the pin where I had it soldered before. You can just barely see it there. When putting the board back together, these screws, you can tighten down basically as tight as you can get them. They're just connecting in here and they're floating pieces. The nuts on top, you don't want to over tighten. I just kind of put my finger on the screw here and then screwed them down. I will definitely want to check them regularly to make sure they don't come loose, but for now they should be good. And now we need to go into beta flight. Okay, so now we need to go to beta flight. I still have version 3.1.6 installed because we want to test this first. We need to go to configuration and it comes with multi-shot, which was fine until we need to do updates here. So we wanna to go to DSHOT 600, save and reboot. Then we need to go into command line. I'm just gonna type resource to start with so we can see all the resources that are being used. And we see motor one, A04 and PPM, A07. And what we wanna do is tie those together. So we're gonna do resource, PPM one, none. And then we'll check that. So now there's no PPM resource, and then we want to do resource motor one A07. So now if we do resource again, we can see motor one is tied to A7. So we're going to type save. Now we'll go into motors. I will connect a battery. So we power the ESCs. Turn these on. And look at that. Four spinning motors. I'm almost catching that wire. That works. Let's see if it'll actually fly before we go on to the next step. Actually, before I do that, because of the way this is soft mounted, the balance and the level is gonna get way off. So you need to do a calibrate accelerometer beforehand. I don't have it perfectly level here, but I have it close and it'll level out. So now we can test fly it. You need to do that every time you remount the flight controller on a model like this. So the motors are spinning, which is good. And I'm gonna count that as flight. Now the last step, we really want turtle mode on this because I'm gonna be flying around inside and crashing. So to do that, we have to update beta flight. So we're gonna to go to the CLI and just double check the version. And it is a Pico Blocks 316. I'm also gonna go through and double check other settings. I normally record this so I can see it, but in this case, you can watch this video instead. So ports, I'm pretty sure, yeah, you are at three. I'm gonna be on that. Now we are on D shot, which is good. We don't have motor stop and we're 4,000, 4,000, which seems to be okay. Personalization does not matter because we don't have an OSD. Don't see anything else. The board is straight. There's no alignment changes. Pit tuning I've not changed. I will after doing the update. Receiver is TAER with standard configs. Modes, we'll just redo these when the time is right. Really that's it, there's, there's nothing special there at all. So now we're gonna go through here and go to firmware flasher. Now here's one thing you will notice and if you've watched my other update videos, I've run into this before and I learned it from viewers. Thank you guys very much. There is no 3.2 version of Pico Blocks. So what you've got to do is go up here and for whatever reason, I don't know why, it's FF Pico Blocks. This is not an F4, it's a Pico Blocks. And now we want to go to 3.2.2. So we will download the firmware and hit Flash Firmware. So it'll go through an erase and do an update for us. And then we'll go and reconfigure. So then I will unplug and plug it back in to reboot everything. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is calibrate the accelerometer because we have some, made some adjustments here and I think I'm pretty level. Go to ports, UART3 is still selected, which is kinda nice. 
configuration, we will not do one shot 125. We'll go to D shot 600. I'm going to do motor stop because I like motor stop. I'm going to switch this back to what they had because it flew pretty well that way. So we're still on S bus, which is good. We want dynamic filters and anti gravity. I don't want global air mode. Save and reboot this page. Now on a separate page, power and battery, I'm going to turn down notifications because. The default's too high. Everybody I see turns this down. I don't know why they don't just change it. I guess it's safer, but every review I see, people change it. So PID tuning, if I was flying this outside, I would turn up the rates, the super rate. In this case, I'm not going to because this is the 100 I'm gonna be flying it inside. I might even turn down the rates eventually, but I will go through here and change my filters and just nuke them all. I will test this by nuke them all, I mean turn them off. I will test this after the first flight just to make sure everything is good. Receiver, I know I need to change this to T-A-E-R. So modes, I'm gonna have to set up from scratch. I'm gonna have arm and angle and horizon and beeper and air mode and flip over after crash, AKA turtle mode. So I want arm on aux one, angle on aux two, horizon right there in the middle on aux two, beeper, I want that down here on aux three, air mode I want to be on aux two so it works in horizon and rate mode, and then flip over after crash, I'm gonna have a new aux four which I will set up on my radio here in just a second. Okay, on my radio, I have everything set. I'm on the ET100, and what I need to go in and do is add a new input. I have seven of them here, and I need to go through and create an eighth one. So here, I'm gonna set this, and I'm gonna set it to this switch. This is my flip over after crash switch. So if I just select this and flip this switch, it'll automatically set itself to SD, apparently. And that is my eighth channel. And why do I need more than six channels? Well, because of new features come out and you never know what you're gonna need them for. Then go in there and exit and now that switch should work. I'm gonna power this on just to make sure it does work in modes the way I expect it to. So what I should be able to do then is flip that switch and arm it. And then if I rotate, it'll just do one side. Oh, did you see that? Motor one didn't work because I forgot a step. Let's go back into the CLI. We'll have to do this again. So there, the resources are back the way they were. So I need to do again, resource, PPM. See, I still forget things too. None, breed, resource, motor one, A07, save. So now let's try arming. And we have four motors, that looks good again. Now if we do flip over after crash, aka turtle mode. There we go, look how cool that is. It's a turtle, now I can put the cat back on and fly it. So the one thing to double check when you do this, when you plug this in, make sure you've got it turned the right way and the wires colors are gonna line up because it would be very easy to do this backwards. These connectors will actually kind of fit in if you try it backwards, so don't do that. Be extra careful and get that on, and I'm gonna screw this top on now. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. Oh wait, yes I can. <coughs> okay, one more step before turtle mode is going to work properly. Gotta update the ESCs. They are on 16.5 and not gonna support this feature properly. So here I've got the old BL Heli Suite, the Chrome version didn't work. What you've gotta to do to get connected is here select SI Labs Clean Flight so it'll pass through the USB. Hit connect and then read setup. And then it said 16.5 before, now I've updated it to 16.7. And what you do is flash BL Heli and go through this process. Just go through and click OK and let it go four times and finish the update. Then reboot and now we'll try it again. I can already tell a huge difference looking straight at that light. I can see everything in the room. Now the lighting was never a problem outside. It was only really a problem in my basement. So let's see though how it flies now and how everything looks. The kids are just kind of playing around in the basement. They had a party. Oh, so see there. Oh, humongous difference. Yes. Now letting me to make 
my delicious tea. Oh, I'm sorry. I will let you, you can make your delicious tea while I fly around, okay? Ah. Uh, so in the basement, humongous difference. The lighting is just perfect with the Nano. I had flown around this with the stock camera some more and it was just fine. But also there's my table of stuff to review. It's kind of getting out of hand. Oops. So that's why I like this. Uh, with a tiny whoop that would be fine. But with some quadcopters inside that would have been a crashing emergency. But here is the deal is if I do have a crash, let's uh, kind of induce a crash here. And we go, whoop. oh no, we're upside down. Now what do we do? So we disarm, switch on turtle mode, flip over, and look at that. How cool is that? And now I can just keep going. That is just awesome. This thing is perfect for this. Oops, just perfect. I need some more practice with it, especially now with a good camera. This thing, with some practice and some uh, learning some better control here, would be outstanding. Just amazing for this type of flying. And it's brushless, so you don't have to worry about motors. And it's super durable. And the video is just great. There's some Minecraft. Set up some gates, be good to go. Oh, I like it. Yeah, this is the way to do it. So there are other things you could do to the lens, but just putting a nano on here for 20 bucks, it's outstanding. Uh-oh, there we go, upside down. Oh no, I have to go pick it up. Oh wait, no. Let's try and go the other way. Oh, am I stuck under a box? I think I might be stuck under a box. So turtle mode won't help you if you are stuck under a box. There was nowhere to flip out. But I am going to officially declare this the best indoor racer by far. It's just, just outstanding. Now the camera made the video and the visualization inside perfect no matter what your lighting conditions are. Enabling turtle mode made it so the time I did crash out in the open, I just flipped back over and it was no problem at all. It is just simply outstanding. The only, only thing I wish it had was an OSD just to be able to see the voltage. So maybe the Nano 2 will have a built-in OSD and we can hook up the battery different so we can see the battery power. Other than that, it is simply outstanding. Simply outstanding. This is the ET100, so the bigger ones are fine too. This is the 115 for comparison. It's only a little bigger, depending on how much room you have. I like this better, but this one's fine too. I think the 125 for me is too big for inside, but if it's what you got, it'll work just fine. I like the little bit smaller motors inside. I don't want quite as much power because I will tend to overdo it and lose control. So that's why that makes this one just, just perfect. This is what I will be flying inside pretty much all winter. This is probably the one that I'm going to grab every time I need to fly inside now. Because I have a number of goggles to test, so this will just be perfect for that. I'm, I'm very happy with it. I like it a lot. Can you tell? So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe right away because I try and make useful things like this for people getting started all the time. If you haven't seen my giveaway, make sure you check that down in the description because I'm trying to give away a whole bunch of stuff at the end of the year. The more subscribers we get, the bigger it's going to get and it gets gigantic. And until next time, remember, with this thing being as good as it is now, I am going to declare Tiny Whoops dead. Except it's twice the cost. Maybe not. Almost.